Today I'm going to talk about how to read Damsi and Pleiade. If you don't know what Damsi, I don't have time to talk about it today, so just go to damsi.com.edu to look at it. So basically Damsi is digital atlas of Roman and medieval traditions. It's a website that's dedicated to the, uh, mapping all the historical features during the Roman Empire and the medieval tradition. So what we focus is on the location of the place and the attributes about the place, for example, the type of the feature, like settlements or mine, and etc. But uh, we started the project in 2006, so we have been working on this project, uh, for four years. And uh, at the same time, another group of people uh, are working on the same um, historical features at the same time period. Right? They did a separate project called Pieda, and what they are focusing on is the bibliographic information of each uh, uh, Asian place. Um, so basically, they, they just scanned the uh, place name directory and the OCR it and it set up a page like this for each place name. So on their website, they don't have exact location of the place. They only have the bounding box of the map grid on the original map. So if you look at the original uh, map sheet, you look at uh, something like this. So you see the map sheet, uh, the page number, as well as the grid. Okay, for example, this one is C3, so this is the uh, bounding box of that place. So they, doc they document that information here, but they have more information, for example, the time periods of this place, the change of the, uh, the place name over time, and some bibliographic information here, as you can see. So, uh, two years ago, we finally uh, realized that the existence of the other side of the project is going on here. So we decided to work together and the tricky thing, thing is how to establish a link between Damsey map feature and the PSS uh, drop information. Um, so as you can see Damsey has place name, location X, Y and the original source. Um, PDS has TID which is used to establish the URL, it has name, map number, grid number and source. And for Pierdus, they have only one source, which is the parent Atlas. But for Damsey, we use di many different sources. Um, so the first step, uh, it's also complex. I don't want to introduce the details for this step. So basically, we create a shape file like this one uh, to represent different uh, pages and set up, uh, establish a grid on each page. So you can see the different layers of map sheets here uh, at different scale and in different locations. And we overlay the shape file with all the point features we have to uh, give all our points the map sheet number as, as well as the grid number. Okay. So now Damsey has name, sheet number, grid number, source. Again, Pierre still has the information. But since are finished yet, it's still more complex. So we have lots of challenges. First of all, challenges with place names. Pierre does, there are lots of typos in OCR, as you can imagine. There are lots of spelling variations if you look at the uh, the table here, as you can see, there are several variations here and a lot of typos in the OCR process um, because they use different fonts um, in, the, in the map page name directory. Okay, and for DOMC, we have typos in digitization process. There are thousands of points, a lot of typos. And uh, in some cases, original, original page names were replaced by commonly used alternative names. Because at first, the project was dedicated for a, for a cost, for, for a complicated cost. So for that cost purpose, we have to change the name to those commonly used place names. So the name is not reliable. And in other cases, well, in, for example, one place name probably is being used in many different places. For example, this example, Hegem Napolis, named after a Roman Empire. And it has been used in Albania, in Greece, in, in Turkey, in Turkey alone. It has different places, five different places in Turkey named, uh, has the same place name. All right, so the map sheet number is also not, also not reliable because there are lots of insert maps in each map sheet. For example, if you look at this map sheet, there are two insert maps here, enlarged here. So the map sheet number I got from the overlaying process is not accurate anymore. And the grid number is also also not reliable because after we finished digitizing all the features on parent standards, we started a process called geo correction, which is to convert all the points to a uh, Google Earth PML file and manually move those points to the exact location so that those historical features can contain contemporary accurate XY locations. So we have better accuracy, but 
the, the grid number we got from the map overlay might be different from the previous grid number. Finally, the source is also not reliable anymore because uh, when we did the digitizing work, we replaced a lot of points in brain patterns with <coughs> high accuracy uh, points from another map series called GIB series. So you can see we have different points from different sources here. Anyway, so in order to get to the greatest point, create ID and establish link between Dumpsey and the Pleiades, we have to look at grid number, place name, sheet number, and source. But then uh, nothing is reliable. Basically. <laughs> um, what can we do? That's an idea. So we can look at the address locator, which is commonly used to locate X, Y location, right? So I can interpret the grid number as a street number. I can interpret the place name as a street name, sheet number as zip code, source as a city, and I just create a dummy variable, which is a state. And finally, I can get x, y as street address, OK? I can use x to represent the previous ID. So just give a constant number for y, OK? So it's very confusing right now. So now I'm going to talk about the advantage of this approach. Why I want to use this approach? First of all, it allows me to create an alias for different places. Because in street locator, I can insert an alias table. For example, I can use Empire State Building to represent the exact street address of entire Empire State Building. And I can also allow a little bit of further match to allow spelling variations because in the street, uh, the, uh, the street address locator, there's a, sen uh, there's a spelling sensibility uh, bar that I can adjust. And also, it allows interactive match, which means if one feature doesn't match, the locator will give me several candidates to allow me manually pick one. OK, so this is how I start. So first of all, I convert all the player's points and features into a reference data set. As you can see, I convert x or convert player's ID into x. and uh, so you can see x represents uh, the previous ID here. It's equals to previous ID. And the y, I just give it a line to a constant number, 999. And I convert the place name, sorry, yes, place name. Uh, OK, so as you can see, this here represents the source. State is always going to choose this. So the number represents the grid number. This code represents the sheet number. And I also have the name. Name is converting the street name. On the other side, for Dumpsey points, again, I use the city to represent the source. This code represents the grid number, state, address. No. For address, I combine the, the, the grid number as well as the street address, which is the place name. OK, it's very confusing. We need to switch mine between Dumpsey and the place. OK, now I can resist, uh, I just locate the tool. Um, so this is the interface that uh, how the edge locator tool was created, and uh, when I just run it, and uh, you see that the number of edges were located. Of course, uh, as you notice, there are more unmatched edges. That, that, that's right because when I did the overlay points with the map sheet overlay, right? There are some cases that one point might fall in many different map sheets. So I create actually created a lot of duplicates during the process. So in reality, one place might only appear on one or two map sheets. So most of the duplicates are redundant. So if you see that the modularity is unmatched, it's OK. The beauty of this approach is that, if you can look closely here, is that this one is not matched, but it gives me a candidate. So the original street address, remember that the first street number represents the grid number, and it gives me the candidate which is G3, it's different from the street address, which is G4, OK? But there's a candidate, which allows me to manually pick if I can confirm that this is the right match. In reality, this is the place, OK? Originally, it's in G, sorry, G3. It's here. But after the, the whole process of geocoding, it falls into G4. Remember, I did a geocorrection to move that pop point to the exact location on the Earth. <coughs> Therefore, the grid number has changed to G4. And by using this approach, the locator can find this candidate in Pleiades and allow me to pick it. Okay, so I can, even though there's one uh, 
Does the green number doesn't match? I can still find the right data ID for this object. All right. Now, there's some numbers. There are about 24,000 Roman places, points in Dam C, 7,000 points don't have a name, and 20,000 points are indicated from an address. And after the, the geocoding process, about 50,000 points are matched with Beard's ID. That's uh, it's about 84% of the name uh, Roman places in Dam C. So, most of the work in Dam C was done. So, Right now, in Dumpsy, you can see an extra column here, which is called Pierdas URL. If you click on it, it will bring you to the right page of the Pierdas project, so that you can know some bibliographical information in the timestamp of this place. The next step for me is to bring this to the web, so that now if you log into Dumpsy project, you can see the link from Dumpsy to Pierdas. All right.